what if I told you that there was one thing in every scratch project that most people overlook? All right, this thing right here, delta time. I, I'm going here to show you why this is so important, how you can put it in your scratch project, and what it's useful for. So let's begin. So right here, I have a simple little program. All right, all it is is just left arrow, right arrow. You move by four. That's literally all it is. So you might be thinking, well, what's wrong with it? And yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, you press left and right, and everything works just like normal. Uh, but this is not using delta time. Let's see what happens if we turn on turbo mode. And now if we start, look at that. As you can see, once you press left and right, it just, it just darts all the way to the left and right of the screen. Like, literally. You see that? I'm pressing left and right, and it, and it just zooms all the way. And even worse, if we if I if I use like the scratch add-ons to change it to 60 FPS, then look, I can move faster than before. So like here in 30 FPS it moves like this. When I change it to 60 FPS, he moves faster. And even worse, look look at what happens when we have lag. So like everything's normal right here, right? But then once our project starts lagging, look at how slow he goes. I mean, look at this. He's he's just crawling. That's how bad it is. If there's like lag, look how much he slows down. If you have a higher frame rate, he goes faster. If you turn on turbo mode, like, geez, look at look at that. That's ridiculous, you know? That's really ridiculous. So how does delta time come into play? First of all, what, what even is delta time? Like, we still don't know what that is. Well, delta time, let me tell you. It is the amount of time passed between one frame to the other. So if you're at 30 frames per second, that means like... It's probably going to be like 0 0.0333 seconds between every frame. Now, you might be wondering, how does that help you? Well, let, let's see. So first, we want to calculate the delta time. And how, how do you calculate it? Well, first, you're going to have need a delta time variable, of course. Uh, you want to make this for all sprites. Now, you need to create another sprite. For this sprite only, just name it last frame. So now we have last frame and delta time. We don't need to see what the last frame is. So, in order to do this, we need to find something that goes that goes up every frame. And this is the timer. We're going to use the timer to calculate the delta time. So, there's a timer right there. There's a delta time at the top. So, when we, when we first click the green flag, you want to set the last frame to the timer, which is zero. All right? Usually, the last frame is always going to start out as zero because when you click the green flag the timer is reset all right well actually no it's 0 0.03 anyways now you're just going to put a forever loop all right you're going to set delta time to timer minus last frame all right so if you see that you see the delta time is going up just like the timer is so if we have the timer where is it right here as you can see the delta time is like pretty much the same as a timer but like 0 0.03 seconds behind but now we need to reset the delta time uh every time uh so what we want to do is just want to put set last frame to timer again and there we go so now we have delta time right here as you can see it's 0 0.03 Except, uh, it's, it's jittering a bit. Instead of staying at 0 0.3, you see it's going up and down a little bit. That is because of very slight lag. Alright, you can't notice it right now. You, you can't notice this at all. But, if I click the lag block, then you can see the delta time goes up to 0 0.5. So what does that mean? That basically means that every 0 0.5 seconds, it does another frame. So that's basically the reason why Scratch Cat is moving so slow when we have lag. Because every 0 0.5 seconds he moves, that's basically the same thing as putting a wait 0 0.5 seconds there. That's basically the same thing. So that's what why lag causes things to go slower. Now also look at this. If we turn on 60 FPS, then the delta time changes to 0 0.015. That's basically half. Okay, so now how can we use the delta time to move Scratch normally? Well, here's what we're going to do. We change x by delta time, and now we change x by 0 minus delta time, which means negative delta time. So now, if we use the left and right arrows, then Scratch Cat moves, but look, look how slow he's moving. This is very, very slow, and that's because delta time is like 0, 0.0, so he's moving by 0 0.03, that's super small. So we want 
to multiply 4 by delta time. And here we want to multiply negative 4 by delta time. So now let's see what happens. And as you can see, Scratch Cat is still moving incredibly slow. And why is that? Because if we click this, look at that. 0. 0 0.128001. See, look, he's literally moving by so little. Like, so what are we going to do? How, how can we calculate it? Well, let's set it to a high number. If we set it to a high number, let's see what happens. And now, as you can see, we can move Scratch Cat like normal, but if we turn on turbo mode, then Scratch is still moving the same amount as if turbo mode wasn't even on. All right? But you, I know what you're thinking right now. We were moving Scratch by four pixels. So what what even is 200 times delta time? Like, what even is that? We want it, We still want him to move by four, just like he was before. Well, uh, the way to calculate that is actually really simple. So we wanted him to move by four, right? So you just want to take four, and now you want to multiply it by the target frames per second, which is 30. So four times 30, what is that? 120. So if we just put 120 here, 120, and then negative 100, stop, negative 120. Now look, now Scratch is moving exactly how he was before, before we even put in the delta time. But now if we turn in 60 FPS, and look, he still moves the same amount. He still moves just as fast as before. We can even turn on turbo mode. He still moves as fast as before. And even better, look at what happens when we lag now. Now that we have so much lag, Look, Scratch Cat is still moving the same amount as if it wasn't lagging at all. That is how that is how good this is. Like he is still moving just like normal. And now here's to further prove my point to you. So at the bottom, we have a Scratch Cat without delta time and he is just moving by 4. And at the top, we have the cat that is using delta time. So let's see the difference. When you use the arrow keys, uh of course, they're both slightly off. The one at the bottom is slightly off. As you can see, they're moving the same speed, though. Now, let's see what happens when we turn on 60 FPS. As you can see, the one on the bottom is moving s twice as fast. It's literally moving twice as faster. All right? If we turn on turbo mode, the, the one on the bottom just... I mean, seriously, what, what the heck? And now, if we turn on lag, as you can see, the one on the bottom is just barely moving. The one on the top is moving like normal. So now that we got this, now I want to show you when to not use Delta Time. Because there are some cases where you don't want to use it. Alright, and I'm here to show you that. So, a, ba a basic rule is that is that you want to use Delta Time whenever you're using a change by. So you see how this says change x by? That's when you want to use Delta Time. Alright, so if you were to like like use the set block like set x or whatever you're not going to use delta time for that all right but even then that rule is still kind of vague because look what happens if we if we were to do something like this wait until not key right arrow pressed until not key left arrow pressed now look now every time we press the right arrow wait what? why it's not working okay i don't know what's happening right now but for some reason it's the arrow keys just aren't moving him but anyways, my point was that if you were to do something like this, where you want to to like once they click it once and then it moves, uh, you would just want to use change x by four without delta time, and because you can see it doesn't get affected by turbo mode or anything. But also because the delta time actually doesn't move them uh, by four every frame. If you if you see it, as you can see, yeah, sometimes it's three point nine, sometimes it's four point whatever. So. Sometimes he would move by four, sometimes he would move by three, and then back and then back to five, so we'll move like back to normal. So yeah, it's not going to work perfectly if you were to do it like that. Uh, I don't know why it's not working though I, when I do this. I mean, it, it was working earlier. Okay, so now let me show you how you can apply Delta Time to like a traditional project, like a platformer or something. So here I have some basic platformer script. Uh... Don't copy this, by the way, because this literally sucks. But, yeah, as you can see, you can jump like normal, like you would expect, like, any platformer. But, of course, uh, we all know when you press turbo mode, uh, yeah, he's on crack now. And look at how fast he goes to the left and right. Look at how he, like, j what is that jump? That's so weird. And then, and then, of course, we go into 60 FPS. He moves much faster than he normally would. It's just, it's just awful. 
just, I mean, basically, this is expecting everyone to be running at perfect 30 FPS, all right? But, of course, it's not. People have different devices. So, this is not using Delta Time. So, now, let's go ahead and apply Delta Time uh, to all of this. So, first of all, we have the left arrow press, change X by negative 4. Uh, we can go ahead and put Delta Time with that. So, we're just going to multiply... Uh, something by delta time. What is it? It's 30 times 4, because 4 is how much we want to move by. So if we already know it's 120, so let's go ahead and put negative 120 there. Here we put 120, because it's the opposite of negative. Alright, and we do the same thing for the right arrow. So now if we test, you can see he moves left and right just like uh, it normally would. So now if we turn on turbo mode, he moves left and right like normal, but... If we jump, of course, yeah, he's a little hyper. So we've got we've got to fix that too. So how in the world can we do that? Well, let's see what the Y vel is. So of course, when we're jumping normally, the Y vel is like that. When we turn on turbo mo mode, the Y vel is just moving crazy. All right, it's it's moving just as fast as the square is. So we want to slow this Y velocity down. So we have to do negative. So we want to convert negative 1 to delta time. So we could use the math to do it, but remember how we're trying to aim for 30 FPS. So we don't even have to do that. We can just type in negative 30. And that's basically the same thing as negative 1. So if we go ahead and test, as you can see, he's jumping uh, just as normal, like normal as he would last time. But now we turn on turbo mode, and let's see. And look at that. Look at how high he jumps, and look at how fast he snaps to the ground, all right? If we turn on 60 FPS, look, he's jumping super high. I mean, what is this? So we're changing the Y vel like normal. So as you can see, the Y vel, it's still, once we turn on turbo mode, the Y velocity is still normal. So why, why is he moving super fast? Well, as you can see in this Y movement script, we have a change by, and we have a repeat around that. So remember how the general rule, uh, we want to multiply this by delta time. But we can't just multiply this by delta time. All right, now this, uh, y vote divided by amount, this is an unknown value. We don't even know what number to put. But thankfully, we can just multiply it by 1. So if we put times 30 times delta time, then it will go like normal. So we can do the same for this. We take the negative, and then we do times 30 times delta time. And now let's test it. So uh, normal 30 FPS, we're jumping like normal. We turn on turbo mode, we're still jumping like normal, 60 FPS, we're jumping like normal, but it's smooth. Now let's go ahead and give it the lag test. So now I'm super laggy, uh, as you can see, uh, yeah, I, I can't even jump. That's not because of an error in the code or anything, that's just because it's so laggy. But yeah, my point is that you can still do it normal if there's like a little bit of lag, alright? Uh, the lag I was doing was kind of excessive, you know? Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, which is, uh, I don't care. Uh, why should I do all this, like, complicated Delta Time stuff just so I can fix an issue that was barely even a problem for me in the first place? And, yeah, you could argue that. That's true. I mean, you don't have to put Delta Time if you don't want to. You don't have to care. I mean, your project is still going to be uh, just as playable if you don't have it. But... If you want your project to work uh, the same, no matter the device uh, frame rate or anything, uh, this would be a good thing to use. And it can also prevent cheating, because sometimes if you turn on turbo mode, uh, a player could cheat that way. Now you still might not care at all, but there is one case, there is one type of project where uh, using delta time is basically necessary, and that is cloud projects. So here's, so here's an example right, I have right here. So here's a little cloud project, you know, on the left and right, everything works normally. But if I turn on turbo mode, then look, this player is like moving like crazy, all right? And then the other player is able to see that. And uh, even worse, if this player turns on 60 FPS, then they can move faster and they have control now. So like the other player is like, what? How can you move so fast? That's, see, look. Uh, people can like have advantages over other people with this. Uh, sometimes it might be lagging. 
Now, I've seen some projects just kick the player from the game if it detects turbo mode, but it still can't detect 60 FPS or lag or anything. So, it's best to just use delta time. So, I can come down here, you see 4. Instead, I can put 120 times delta time and all this. And uh, the costume will still be changing. So, we, as you can see here, we're changing this variable, this variable by one. Note, we want to put 30 uh, times delta time. And now this cheater over here can no longer move super fast if they turn on turbo mode. Uh, so they're playing fair. Uh, now, I know most of you don't have any plans to make cloud projects. But if you have a project with like a cloud high score at the end or something, like high score cloud variable, uh, then people could cheat to, to like do that too. So it's also best for you to keep uh, the uh, delta time thing. Well, anyways, uh, hopefully you found this tutorial interesting or... Uh, uh, yeah.